Thupten John Phuong once said that a lot of the practice is the grass at the gate to the cattle pen. The image being, as soon as you open the gate to the cattle pen, the cattle go rushing out looking for grass someplace else. And usually there's a little bit of grass right on the posts next to the cattle pen gate, and most of the cattle miss it. That's the same with us. When we look for happiness, we tend to look far away. Even when we're meditating, we tend to look far away from where things actually are. Everything we need to know, the Buddha says, right here in this fathom-long body with awareness. And we sometimes think that Buddhism has a negative take on the body, especially early Buddhism. But it has more of what you would call a balanced take, like the chant just now. It's not lies about the body filled with all sorts of unclean things, your liver, your kidneys, your spleen, your intestines, the contents of your intestines. If you took them out and put them on the floor, we'd have to clean them up right away. Yet they're all tucked inside right now, so they seem to be presentable. The purpose of that is to give you a sense of detachment from your desire, from your lust, and your attachment to the body as a something that constantly has to be pandered to. Once you have that element of detachment, then you can look at the body and say, well, what does it have to offer that's of a positive nature? And Buddhism talks about that, too. There's the potential for rapture right here, the potential for ease, all associated with the breath. Many times when we read the descriptions of right concentration, seems far away, but everything we need is right here. When John Lee talks about comfortable breath sensations and uncomfortable ones, we already have comfortable breath sensations in at least some parts of the body. There's already the potential for a sense of fullness, a sense of ease in different parts of the body. It's a simply a matter of applying our directed thought and evaluation. What that means is we locate them and then we work with them for a while. The working here seems, many times, is simply a matter of protecting them. The word of John Fuang uses prakong, which means you kind of hover around and make sure it's okay, that nothing happens to it. Like trying to start a fire in a windy day. You have to cup your hands around the little, little tiny flame that you start out with to make sure the wind doesn't blow it out. until finally it catches, and then it starts to spread, and it reaches a point where it's strong enough that you don't have to cup it anymore. So you might want to try a little exercise on how to create that sense of ease, or at least locate the sense of ease in the body, and then allow it to develop. Pay attention to your feet and your hands. Where are they right now? How do they feel? Do they feel tense? If they feel tense, relax them. Just go through them finger by finger, toe by toe, through the palms of the hands, through the soles of the feet. Just try to relax all the little spots of tension that you can find. And you begin to notice that sometimes as you breathe in, there's a slight tensing, either in your hands or in your feet, maybe the back of your hands or in your fingers. See if you can breathe in and out without tensing. Just keep both hands, both feet as relaxed as possible, all the way through the in-breath, all the way through the out. Notice when there's a tendency to tense up and allow it to relax. Which part of the breath cycle there's a little bit of tensing. Get so you can maintain that sense of relaxation all the way through the in-breath, through the space between the in-breath and the out-breath, and all the way through the out-breath, and then through the space be between the out-breath and the next in-breath. Keep that as constant as you can, no matter how the breath is cycling through the rest of the body. Keep the sense of relaxation in your feet and your hands as steady as possible. It doesn't have to be an enormous relaxation, just enough to know that it's more relaxed than it was. One way of checking it is to compare one hand to the other, one foot to the other, see which one is more relaxed. 
and then allow the tenser one to relax so that it's as relaxed as the other one. Sometimes you find that as you relax the feet and the hands, it sets off patterns of relaxation to the rest of the body, too. Up the arms to the neck, up the legs to the small of the back. Well, allow that to happen, but don't lose your focus on the feet and the hands. Just let that sense of relaxation spread. And then maintain it. Keep watch over it. It's the focusing on that sensation. That's directed thought. Watching over it, protecting it. That's the evaluation. And in that sense of right, relaxation, there's the potential both for ease and pleasure and for rapture. Just a question of allowing them to develop, allowing them to stay continuous. They tend to build up if they're allowed to be continuous. There's a cumulative effect. And that's all you have to do. It's right there. It's very simple. But we sometimes try to make things too difficult for ourselves, complicate things when we don't really have to. So keep your direct thought and evaluation pretty uncomplicated. Just work on being steadily vigilant right here. And that's it. The grass at the, the gate to the cattle pen. <laughs>